hypersonic missiles are a threat that's worth taking notice of. These weapons travel eye-wateringly fast and are highly maneuverable. This makes them a massive threat and why they've been such a topic of conversation during the Ukraine war. However, they may not be as invincible as the Russian president thinks they are. We're going to take a closer look at what hypersonic missiles are and how they're flawed. The reason why hypersonic missiles are seen as so invincible is that they differ from conventional ballistic weapons. This seemingly makes them much harder to catch by missile defense systems. This is all down to speed and altitude. They're quick and they're low. Hypersonic missiles fly from Mach 5 to Mach 10 or around 5 to 10 times as fast as the speed of sound. For comparison, the supersonic commercial airliner flew at about twice the speed of sound. This iconic plane had a maximum cruising speed of 1,354 miles per hour or Mach 2.04. So you need to take those speeds and multiply them by three if you want to go as fast as a hypersonic missile. The hypersonic weapons that the Russians have been using are around eight meters long, and some experts say that this type of missile flies as fast as Mach 5. Others say it flies at Mach 9 or even Mach 10. It's so fast that the air pressure in front of the weapon forms a plasma cloud as it moves, which absorbs radio waves. This is one of the problems that we're going to explore. There are several different types of hypersonic weapons. These include hypersonic glide vehicles, which are missile warheads that maneuver and glide through the atmosphere at high speeds after an initial ballistic launch phase. This glide vehicle is boosted on a rocket to a high altitude and then glides to its target. An example of a hypersonic glide vehicle includes China's Dongfeng-17. Then there are hypersonic cruise missiles, which use air-breathing engines such as scramjets to reach high speeds. Because they ingest air into their engines, hypersonic cruise missiles require smaller launch rockets than their glide equivalents which means they can cost less and be launched from more places. Hypersonic cruise missiles are under development by China and the US. There are also hypersonic air-to-air -air missiles, which use scramjets to intercept air targets. It's not just the fact that these weapons are so quick that makes them a threat. There's also the advanced maneuverability all along their trajectory. The missile's flight path can be changed during a flight so defenses need to track it along the full path to successfully target it. Then it's the altitude that also poses a potential problem. The new hypersonic missiles fly much higher than slower subsonic missiles, but much lower than intercontinental ballistic missiles. Allied forces do not have good tracking coverage for this region, but neither does Russia or China. However, despite all these features which make hypersonic missiles worrying, there are plenty of reasons why they aren't foolproof. The key reason is that they are very expensive and therefore not likely to be produced in large quantities. As an example, if you were to take 300 ground or sea launched intermediate range ballistic missiles, it would cost about $13.4 billion. Although this is very expensive, the same number of hypersonic missiles would cost closer to $18 billion. Then there's the fact that these missiles eventually have to reach the same atmosphere as their ballistic counterparts. To approach its target, the hypersonic weapon would eventually need to come down to the warmer and denser atmosphere. To prevent melting, the missile would need to slow down to the speeds of its traditional counterparts. This means that its main advantages would be lost and it'd need the same level of defense as other missiles. So ultimately, the hypersonic missile would present the same level of threat during this stage. Then there's the heat. These insane speeds produce temperatures as high as 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, according to a U.S. congressional report. This report concluded that significant failures had contributed to delays in the testing process of hypersonic missiles. This intense heat poses massive problems to sensitive electronics and aerodynamics, which can be impacted by the tiniest problem. It appears as though there's plenty more work to be done until this issue is completely resolved. 
One of the main advantages that has been sold concerning hypersonic missiles is their stealth and the ability to evade radar. On closer inspection, this might not actually be the case. We mentioned earlier that the speed of the missile causes a plasma sheath to form around the missile. This causes big issues. It turns the missile into a large glowing object which can be visibly detected by infrared sensors and modern radars, even from space. This then loses all of the stealthy advantages that its flight path and speed give it. Add to this the fact that this plasma is reflective. A recent study showed that its hypersonic cone yielded a relative radar cross-section due to the increase in the area of conductivity around the object provided by its plasma sheath. This again adds to the missile's detectability. Further to this, the sheath also blocks out communications with the missile. It does this by blocking out all radio frequencies. Add to this the fact that the missile would also be totally blind from melting front sensors, and you can see why this is an issue. Both of these factors mean that hypersonic missiles experience communications blackout during their return to Earth, and this makes navigation particularly difficult. For all of these drawbacks, the missile would need to have a significant advantage against its ballistic counterpart to really justify its use but this appears to not be the case. Hypersonic missiles fly through the atmosphere where they are subjected to significant drag forces. Ballistic missiles, on the other hand, fly into outer space where they are free from these effects. This means that while hypersonic weapons fly a more direct path to their targets, they lose much of their speed throughout the flight, ultimately taking longer to reach their targets than comparable ballistic missiles. All of these reasons might help to explain why the weapon isn't performing the way that Putin would like it to. He announced in 2018 that Russia's hypersonic weapon could overcome all existing air defense systems. However, Ukraine shot down six of these weapons that Russia fired in an assault on Kiev. These shootdowns have been verified by U.S. sources, which means that a Cold War-era defense system defeated one of Russia's most advanced conventional systems. So, while on paper hypersonic missiles appear to be the future of missile technology, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes that suggests that there's more hype behind hypersonic weapons than effectiveness. The main advantages behind the missiles with their speed and altitude actually prove to be their downfall and lead to heat and drag, which takes away the main benefit first seen with the weapon. This helps to explain why it hasn't been as effective in battle as we all would have expected. What do you think about hypersonic missiles? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.